YouTube, this is KWAL0307 with a new series. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call it. Um, I'm just basically going to show places that are either historical or they mean a lot to me. Um, um, it's, I don't want to just base it out of Virginia Beach where I'm from. Um, I'm going to do other places, but it's going to be mainly Virginia Beach for right now. Um, so the very first one is was right by my last house um it happened just about over a little over two years ago on april 6 2012 um, um it happened like on good friday um uh f a 18D Hornet um, from the Navy crashed into a um, apartment complex that was right by my old apartment. Um, if you saw the wreckage, which I'll show later, um, you could throw a rock and you could hit my old apartment from the wreckage. Um, this means a lot to me because. Um, I could have been here for that. Um, I was in Washington, D.C. doing school at the time, and I had a part-time job, and I had an opportunity to come home for spring break, but I chose to keep going to my um, my, my, my job, my, my part-time job. So I wasn't here for it, but my dad was. My dad, um, he got first-hand experience of the accident, and I'll have him, like, tell his reactions and stuff, but first, I learned of it, um, first, when I was watching TV, it was one of my days off from school and from my, my part-time job, um, I was watching Actually, I was watching um, Impractical Jokers for one of the first times, and my roommate came up to me and he said, you, hey, you need to go watch um, CNN, and I was like, oh, okay, why? And I flipped it to CNN, and I couldn't believe it. Um, it was like a dream, like a bad dream. Um, I saw it and I was like, what? I, I kept doing that, like, no, that that's not right. I, I, all I saw on the bottom, on, on the, the bottom ticker thing was like, Navy plane crashes into Bird Neck Village. And I was like, what? That, I, I live there. Um, how, what, what, what? I was like, I, I was confused, um, and CNN actually covered it. I, I, it, it was one of their main stories of that day. Um, I don't know what happened. Like, like I said, I wasn't really affected by it, but my dad was. He'll tell you firsthand experience later when he gets back. Um, but it just. When I found out, I was really scared. Um, I, I, I was fearful that something happened to my dad. Um, I was fearful that something happened to our apartment. Um, probably the first time in a long time that I was scared. Um, like I said, it, it, it just it seemed unreal. It seemed surreal. Um, but I'll show you, um, but, uh, um, I don't think anyone was hurt, um, but I think two to three buildings had to be torn down in the wreckage. Um, it, the, the buildings are still, like, torn down, and they're, they're not back yet, um, I don't know what they're doing, um, but... Literally, I could have been in the um, crossfire of this 
plane crash, if I had chosen to come home for spring break that Easter weekend, so kind of makes you wonder, like, some things happen for a reason, um, but I could have been here in danger of this crash, so I'm going to show um, the wreckage, and I'm going to show my dad's, like, thoughts on it, um, those are my thoughts on it, um, I just, it made me really scared, um, Thank you, YouTube. Um, I'm going to show you where it is now. Um, hopefully you like this series. Um, thank you. Hi, YouTube. This is Kevin. I had to do, redo the video um, of me showing the airplane crash because it was corrupted. Here's the sign. Um, it's Mayfair Muse Apartments. From what I read, it was a senior community. Now let's go see the... Where it crashed. Um, where I'm heading is restricted, but I just asked someone and it's, it was okay for five minutes, so I'm gonna try to hurry. It's basically right in front of where I'm going. There's this sign that says, um, they're building new apartments. It says Moise in development. And here's where the airplane crashed. And right here. Ooh, by those trees were my old apartment. So, like my dad said, you could basically throw a softball from there all the way to there. And um, there's only four apartments torn down. And I'm not sure how many apartments were damaged by it, but I swear it is. It's just not being built, but they're trying to. So, yep, I used to live right there, so I could have been there. And then the saying is, it was a good Friday because no one got hurt, which is kind of funny because it was a good Friday. So, this is where. The FA-18 Hornet crashed, so thank you. I'm going to leave now so I don't get arrested. YouTube, this is Kevin. Um, we had to leave the apartment because it said um, no trespassing and I didn't want to cause trouble. Here's my dad for my questions. Um, how did you learn about this incident? Well, I was at work that day. Uh, I work at the uh, big Navy base downtown in Norfolk. And uh, I was repairing and uh, doing maintenance work on trailers, boat trailers. And uh, people were saying, hey, did you hear about that F-18 that crashed in uh, outside of Oceana, Naval Air Station Oceana in Virginia Beach? And uh, of course I said, well, no, you know, or, are you talking about this crash back in the 90s? They said, no, no, it, it just crashed. So uh, when I had a chance on break, I investigated and I found out that uh, the plane had gone down somewhere near the uh, Birdneck Road exit off Interstate 264, which is the exit that I take, you know, going home. And uh, so I, I searched and searched, and uh, I was trying to localize it to find out, you know, I'm, I'm curious, where did it go in? And uh, from all the picture angles that were available at the time that, that I had privy to, it seemed as though it went down on the west side of Birdneck Road over by um, the 501 Grill. Um, that's a local nightclub hotspot and whatnot. And uh, so I told everybody, you know, you know how it is when you're telling stories, you got to embellish things a little bit. And so I told everybody, I think that was like 500 yards from where I live. Well, <laughs> as you saw, um, it 
the jet actually went down in Mayfair Muse Apartments, which um, I showed you was just on the other side of that tree line from where I lived on 24th Street. So uh, Kevy wasn't lying. I could have gone out into the back porch with a baseball and thrown a baseball off one of the buildings that was the most damaged that has been torn down. Um, how did this event affect you, um, the, the day and then like days after? Well, um, it started off on the way home because, uh, like I said, I come down 264 towards the beach and then I get off on Birdneck Road. But the uh, airplane, which uh, you correctly identified, by the way, it's an FNA-18D <coughs> uh, Hornet two-seater flying out of Naval Air Station Oceana. Uh, the problem that caused the crash was a malfunction in the fuel system. So even though it had plenty of fuel on board, many hundreds of gallons, it was spewing fuel and falling from the sky like a rock at the same time. And a lot of the fuel got spilled all over the interstate and whatnot before the aircraft um, crash landed. How it affected me was I couldn't get any closer than, I think it was um, First Colonial. I had to, had to exit, one exit before I normally would, get off, go down Virginia Beach Boulevard. Lo and behold, the police and local authorities had the crash scene cordoned off with that uh, black and yellow police caution tape. Yeah, and, and that's good. That's a good thing because there was fire and uh, a lot of things could have happened. So the closest I could get to park, uh, parking was at a premium, of course, because of all the displaced people and news people and uh, <coughs> looky-loos and whatnot. I ended up driving down Laskin Road to the old abandoned theater, which is now Beach Movie Bistro. Um, that's probably two blocks from where we live now, where we're cutting this video, and three blocks from where the plane went in. Uh, along the way, there were police officers and or dudes in uniform checking IDs, checking your address on your uh, driver's license, making sure that you were supposed to be where you were headed. And of course, you know, I had the requisite uh, 24th Street address, so I got to get really close. I got over to the apartment's office on 24th Street, and I couldn't go any farther because there was caution tape up. But um, I managed to, um, you know, I wandered around until I saw a police officer on the other side. And I said, hey, um, what, what's the story? When do I get to go back to my home? Because I live over there behind where you're standing, behind the caution tape. And the guy was real friendly. He said, uh, you know, the Navy responded pretty good. They're um, spraying down foam, making sure that the... Uh, there's no reflash on the fire from the uh, accident. And uh, my guess is probably about 9 o'clock tonight. Well, this was about 3.30 in the afternoon. So what I did was I thought, well, 9 o'clock, I can kill time until then. I'll go have a nice steak and a beer and watch a movie. I can't remember what movie it was. Uh, I suppose we could go back and check and figure it out, whatever was hot in April 2012. Um, so I, I think I went to Uno Pizzeria like we do, or it might have been Ruby Tuesdays, and I had a steak, and I had a beer, and I watched the movie, and I came back, and the caution tape was still up. So um, I thought, well, crap, I don't want to go to a shelter. You know, I've slept in too many airports and train stations and bus stations and, you know, whatnot. <clears throat> I don't want to do that again if I can avoid it. I'm not going to go sleep on the beach because it's April and freeze. Uh, what can I do? I don't want to rent a motel because they're probably already all grabbed by all the early birds who had foresight to go rent one. So I went back to my shop and uh, lo and behold I had a cot squirreled away. So uh, I played around on the internet on my computer, uh, hit the sack, woke up the next morning because the next morning was Saturday, it wasn't a work day, uh, brushed my scuzzy fangs, went to McDonald's and got a burrito and some coffee, uh, watched some soccer on the internet and then uh, headed back home, and by then, probably about 11 o'clock in the morning, the uh, caution tape was gone. So uh, it really only affected me <coughs> for uh, sleeping out of my own bed for one day, and that was no, no great shake. Uh, <coughs> it was quite an adventure, and it made for a good story. Um, when I first found out, like I said in the start, I was really scared, and... Um, I kept 
remember I was texting you and I was trying to see if it was like close to you but I didn't know if you were like couldn't text or something but um is it, it weren't you scared that like our I don't know um the, our apartment was like damaged or anything well uh two thoughts no I wasn't scared wasn't scared in the least because it's only property uh two um I wasn't worried because the apartments uh, require me to have three hundred thousand dollars worth of um, property damage coverage. So had the airplane fallen right on the house and destroyed everything, I probably would have been better off. Um, I would have lost some photographs and stuff, but uh, for the most part, um, most of my memories of childhood and adolescence are stored in my storage bin. So, and and that's off site. That's over. Um, by Kmart, uh, about three miles away. So what would really be unsettling is if a tornado ripped through the storage, jackrabbit storage, and tore up our storage bin. Uh, yeah, I'd be a little bit upset about that. Um, so no damage from this plane incident happened to our apartment, right? Uh, that's correct. Um, we suffered no damage, although um, the guy that lived next to me, closer to the crash, um, his wife apparently was in the apartment, and the concussive, the last... Um, You're saying there was no damage to our apartment? Yeah, that's right, Kev. Um, our apartment suffered no damage. Um, in the blast or the concussion of the airplane hitting, you know, think of only a lot more, a lot more bass, and uh, certainly a lot louder. Uh, the guy that lived next to me, his, his wife was home at the time, and apparently it freaked her out to the point where she ran outside, hopped in her car, and started driving. And you know how when you get freaked out and you just jump in your car and start driving, you end up somewhere? Well, that's what happened. She ended up somewhere, didn't know where she was, was still freaked out by the crash. Uh, probably thought war was starting because, uh, you know, people sometimes get irrational when they panic. Uh, he ended up having to field her call and figure out having his panicked wife on the phone figure out where she was and you know calm her down and uh, hang tight and I'll come get you so that happened additionally the guy who lived on the other side of this guy with the freaked out wife I don't I don't know the guy didn't talk to him but I heard um, secondhand that uh, the accident when the airplane went in the uh, resultant explosion and concussive effect kicked up a brick or a rock or something, a tree branch, I don't know, but uh, it flew with such force through the air that it went flying through this guy's, um, what do you call that? Um, they call it a door wall in Michigan. What, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry, a sliding glass door. So this thing totally blew out a sliding glass door and continued on inside and screwed up some of his stuff. So... What do you think caused this? Like, oh, the, the crash? Yes. Um, uh, you know, it's funny. I haven't read the official report, so I'm just kind of um, uh, making an educated guess. But um, the aircraft was spewing fuel as it went in. So some sort of problem in the, the fuel system, whether it was uh, a bad part or faulty maintenance, um, something to do with the physical structure of the aircraft went bad. Um, I think that's good. Um, this is just how um, it affected my dad. Um, thank you, Dad. Um, oh, you're most welcome. <laughs> right. I'd like to take this time to thank everyone that helped me with this video including my dad and um, Wavy News 10 and Washington Post. I got some pictures from them. Um, if you want to see the pictures, either pause the um, video when the pictures come up or look them up online. I tried to add more pictures, but I wasn't successful. I'm still new to this. I'm, I'm learning. Um, also, um, leave a comment below if you like this series and you want it to continue. Um, 
make suggestions on what I should visit, uh, what should I do. Um, this is just testing the waters. Um, um, leave a comment too below. Uh, what do you remember about this event? Um, and thank you. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, YouTube, and have a nice day.